right, so these are the components for the kit. This car is going on. Currently just gonna swap the ECU out first and go from there. The intake manifold's already off, that's not necessary, but more or less we wanted to see something, so that's off. We're just working on this side for now. All right, so first thing was the ECU. Getting the box off, it's just four screws at each corner. Phillips underneath that, and once you get that off, I'm uh, gonna un unhinge the ECU right here. On the TCU, there are these sliders that go in here. You're just gonna have to get a flat head and pull it back and pull this off. This is a normal clip that you squeeze. And the other side, same thing, get a screwdriver and start pulling this back, flat head, and it locks that way. Afterwards, there's another fill up here, and I believe you slide right out. Also, you can take off this, which goes for the start to the K40 relay, uh, and then pull this out, and you should be able to just swap over the ECU. All right, so T30s are holding this in. Screw here, screw here. This comes off. Just place the other one on it. And you're good to go. Next up is the airbox. It's pretty straightforward and simple. There's a couple clamps on the airbox itself. A mass airflow sensor clip. Yeah. It could, where's it mounted? Oh, it's mounted on the airbox? Yeah. All right. I'm not sure if this is even actually going to be used anymore. Because this was what controlled the wastegate under vacuum. So I'm pretty sure that's going to be eliminated. We need to, like, get little... Uh, does it come with any caps for those? Like what? Does it come with any like vacuum caps? <clears throat> no. We're probably gonna have to cap something off. But anyways, airbox is out. Next on, turbo and lines and downpipe. AC is back in, airbox is off. We're on the downpipe. Luckily this was oriented proper that we could just brace the pry bar here, yank up on this thing while squeezing the clamp together. Uh, two person job, or if you have a locking pliers, that could work as well. Now I'm just gonna remove, loosen this bolt, take the downpipe off. Already loosen the oil feed to the turbo. Then we gotta take the bolts off here. Also, heat shield's coming off. All right, downpipe removed. Still, I believe this, eh, this is already loose. I don't know if these are 12s or 13s, but I'll let you know in a second. I also gotta take the clamp off right here to yank this stock turbo out. And there's also something at the bottom. I believe there's two, uh, there might be five millimeter Allens that hold the turbo oil return to the block. But we'll see in a second. All right guys, all the bolts are disconnected. I first started with the one on this side, that side and the top one, basically hardest to easiest. The one on this side, unfortunately was like galled up, but it got out with some heat. And uh, 17 on the top, two 15s on the bottom and that, and I think, should slide out. I need both my hands, so one second. All right, so oil feed line is off. I just cut it and use the extended uh, socket on it. It's a 17, but if you don't use penetrate and lubricant on it for a while, it'll just round it out because it's pretty rusted in there. So I cut it, use an extender. It's a 17 extension, cut it off. You got a new one, so the old one isn't really necessary, but I prefer if I didn't have to cut it, but it wasn't budging. Use some heat, use penetrant, use heat, and it still wasn't turning. And it was just starting to seem as though it's going to round out because you have to use a, a box um, wrench. If you have a crow's, that might actually that will definitely work with a crow's um, foot wrench. But I just had to cut it off. I didn't have one of those. So yeah, now I'm going to mount the, the aftermarket oil feed line, cut that off, and. Um, for the oil return and then start continuing mounting more stuff up. I'm not sure where I am, but went for lunch and everything's still off. I want to take the EGR stuff off, but you can't just lift it out. I've never actually taken the EGR pipe out of, off the motor in a car. So yeah, to take it off in the car, you actually have to, uh, well, at least I do, you have to remove this intake pipe, or sorry, coolant pipe that's under the intake and then it should be able to come straight up i do hope i hope there's enough room in between here but we'll see in a second all right 
got the pipe out, but unfortunately the O-ring expanded, so I'm gonna see, figure out how we get to fix that, and EGR pipe is out, so don't gotta worry about any type of rattle. Next, I'm gonna mount the flange up and put the turbo on. All right, flange is on. We rerouted this here, knocked this heat shield back, uh, but yeah, the coolant line was rerouted through, I guess this is where the air filter went, just to get, keep it away from here. I'm definitely gonna have to have some type of heat shielding on this, and we'll figure that out later on. But now, time to mount the turbocharger, and continue on. The clocking the turbo, have to release these to clock it, but also putting this on, make sure you guys clean this, because this is a line you get, and it's actually dirty on the inside. Can't really show it very well, but yeah, there's, there's like, it was cut and yeah, clean it before you stick it on here. All right, so I'm under the turbocharger. <clears throat> There's a lot of stuff that you actually have to move in from here. The heat shield's in the way. The brake line is insanely close. I will actually get a light on that to show you guys if I can find a light. Where is the light? I found the light. All right. So, if you guys look, that's the brake line. So that needs to be bent multiple times to get out of the way before you put the turbo in. We're gonna figure it out. We just zip tied stuff out of the way. This cooling line right here, clearly it's kinked. We just pulled it out of the way just for the time being. We're gonna have a definitely gonna need to replace that pipe for clearance. But yeah, turbo's on. Another thing, uh, clocking it. In his instructional video, he only shows removing the 13s, but you're definitely gonna have to remove the spring clamp on the compressor housing uh, to get it to clock properly with the oil feed and drain in the proper place. The this coupler down here also, this one, there's like a little adapter and an offset coupler. I have no idea how you get that in without taking the compressor housing off. So I take the compressor housing off because I have to clock it correctly and putting this on with the compressor housing off is easier because there's no space in between here unless you then un unbolt the OEM cool uh, charge pipes which is probably what other people would do. Um, but not really necessary. Just pull the compressor housing off, I guess. So we still have to oil inlet and oil drain and then put the intake manifold back on and get an O-ring for the coolant line or the coolant hard pipe that goes on the other side of the motor because we have to take it out to get the EGR off. All right. Turbocharger's fitted. Some tips that I would give is this heat shield has to get cut. The brake line in there is insanely close and you probably get, well not probably, you should bend it. You can see that. And that's the, the wastegate. So that had to be done. We pulled these out of the way for the time being until we get a proper um, coolant line for it. But there's a lot of heat stuff that's in the way. Also, I'm not sure how you'd get, I'm guessing down there, you have to disconnect the charge pipe from the block. There's two bolts, but instead, since we had to clock the turbo anyways, took this off, took the compressor housing off to clock it and put that back on whilst the housing was off. But pretty straightforward. All right, more of this awesomeness. So we got everything connected to the turbo, return, inlet, air pipe definitely recommend using this we had to cut six centimeters off the end to make it work properly this is still at a strange angle but it is what it is another thing we found out the tube that he provides does not work so we're going to take the oem pipe and cut it and um and see if we could shove this inside of it also this would be nice if it was black not blue but overall things are going okay i gotta get that o-ring at my house and then come back here and uh then we get started up all right, everything's buttoned up, and we're gonna do the first start soon and check for leaks. Uh, and also, believe the coolant system. But overall, not that bad.